On this team, we fight for it. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that itch. Coming in at 320 kilobytes per second, it's time for Maddie C's Sports for you and me. All right, everybody, Madison Sports for you and me. As always, special guest, the OG MMA guy on my show, guy who's had my support on my show for years. Yeah, most my definitely. Boy, my boy, Slippery Pete, Peter Barrett. How are you doing on this wonderful, not too cold day in Massachusetts? No, it's, it's really nice out, Maddie. It's fucking, you know, I'm, we were just cruising around Boston getting a couple errands done. And uh, I'd say it's like, you know, high 60s. So it's nice. Sun's out. No no, no clouds. It's a beautiful day. Sun, it's a good fall out, day. Sun's out. Gun's out, bro. There it is. And if you people are wondering, you guys got to buy his his merch because it's the dopest thing out there. I'm telling you, you, you won't be disappointed. Never, 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 never a dull moment with, with the... Uh, with the fight gear ever. I mean, we're starting to get it. I mean, the fight gear has been so good. We're starting to get it tattooed on my, on my body. So it's there forever. Yeah. Do you think Maddie C should put something Peter Barrett like on that? So like, no, is it this one? No. Yeah. Somewhere. Which arm is it? There's all empty space right here, bro. So yeah, I mean, bro. I mean, I'm going my, my next mission. Once I, uh, sorry. Once I, uh, Get an, get another fight under my belt. Sit down. It'll be to 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 color in what's already outlined on, on my arm, and then I'll be go doing some of the candy wrappers up my arm from there. I think my idea will be as a as a dedication to you will just just be the brass knuckles because brass is. knuckles always look dope, and they're so simplistic to make. Oh, for sure. I mean, I I got I, I've got a nice pair right here on my on my arm as well. This dude's mad tough because he's got those tattoos you know? and he was dealing with an infection and still looks dope. So, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, was, we're that dope. was a nightmare. We're, we're tattoo like OGs, of course. Mm -hmm. So, man, like, like I said, viewers, that the infamous sick interview with Pete last time was. Lost in the abyss somehow. So fuck Mac and Apple and all that shit. The so we'll talk about. It. So we'll talk about July second. So you fought Jacob Bond. It was a absolute bloodbath. Absolute excellent fight. So take me to that fight, man. Yeah, I mean, so going into that fight, we we I the team. Uh, I had just gotten split like three weeks before the fight. It was, it was my, my last weekend sparring. And unfortunately I got a uh, need in the head um, or getting some, some clinch stuff. And I split my, my, that would be my right eye open. And, you know, I didn't think it was as bad as it really was. And I didn't go to the hospital to get it stitched. So I just kind of butterflied it myself with a trusty like breathe right strip, which is actually pretty clever. 
if you think about it because it because it pulls the skin up and holds it together so it sits so it seals all right um but so that being said knowing that i had a fresh cut i knew i was going to bleed in that fight you know and it just so happened to be like 45 to a minute a minute and a half into the into the first round that one of the jabs opened up my eye and and you know it just it bled like a motherfucker and having that you know, that being said, if that never opened up, there wouldn't have been a lot of my blood in that fight. You know what I mean? That was like yeah, the one place yeah. where I was only bleeding. And um, I couldn't let that slow down what I was trying to do. And even talking to, you know, Steve Rita, who was the ref, uh, the cage side doctor, you know, after the fight, they they both, you know, had, had made a point to say, um, you know, if it was anybody else, we might have stopped that fight. But we know what kind of a reputation you have. We know you're a tough kid. We know what you're trying to do. Um, so we let the fight continue. But it was it was a pretty nasty cut. It was a, there was a lot of blood coming out of there. And uh, was a, I mean, yeah. at one point in the second round, there was so much blood in my eyes, and that, there was like Vaseline and blood in, and, and Vaseline in, in blood in this eye. And I think my left eye was clear, but like all I was seeing was like shapes in front of me like there was everything was like really, really really blurry like i don't know what it's like to need glasses but I, that night i felt like i needed glasses because of how blurry my vision was because of the amount of like blood and vaseline that was in my eyes so <laughs> so it's like you were tripping but you were having a bad trip seeing it no seeing dude i was still having a, no way i was still having a blast i was still having a blast we went in there and uh you know that fight was just my cardio was really good my conditioning was really good uh, you know, I spend a lot of time working. Um, uh, he's a guy online, a million styles boxing coach, Barry Robinson. He's got a ton of tutorials out there. It's all, what it comes down to is like boxing for combat sports. So it's not about, you know, how to throw a punch. It's about how to move to get you to the position to throw a punch. It's about dispositions, it's about feints, it's about footwork, it's about foundation, you know? So I spend a lot of time working his stuff on top of, you know, everything I do up at Sit Yad Tong uh, with Andy and Mark, everything I do over at Lozon's with Joe. Um, so it's just like, it's another layer, you know? And, and I was really able to put that on display because uh, on top of all the other stuff I would have been doing, I had been working with my breath coach. Uh, he's a Wim Hof instructor, Michael Cristoforo, Mike Cristoforo. He actually worked with me and Connor Matthews ahead of our last fights. And if you watch Connor Matthews fight on contender series, he yes. was all gas, no break too. And we just were both cardio freaks and we were really just able to, to pick up the, the pace when we needed to. And it was back to, to the original point. I just beat the brakes off a of bone. You know what I mean? It was all gas, no brakes, high intensity, highly calculated violence. And I just beat the shit out of them for 15 minutes. Well, 13, really. It was it was two rounds and two minutes into it, into the third. It was excellent, man. And you know what? The thing that pisses me off, well, it shouldn't piss me off because I've said this a couple of times in interviews already, is there's casual fans and then there's the like legit fans. And the casual wants... What they got from your fight, which was a bloodbath, but as a mm -hmm. as a fighting style where nothing happens, it's like, well, this was a shit fight. No, it was a legit fight, and you people just don't know the difference. So in that way, it kind of sucked. But I mean, the thing that amazed me that was so fucking cool was you had uh, Joe Lowe's on, and you had Chip the Surgeon in your corner. That's some dope shit right there. Oh yeah. So my norm, norm, the normal cast is usually it does it has included some combination. I would say of Joe, Joe has been in my corner for every fight since I fought Zach right before I got on the contender series. So he's been in my corner every fight since then. Um, and then there's some rotation of crew, Mark, Andy, Chip, um, or it's you know some some rotation of those guys so it was it, it's always good to have those guys behind me you know there's just there's just a lot of knowledge behind those guys because i mean there's a lot of knowledge behind me too i i, I don't want to cut myself short or anything or, you know what i'm saying like i've been in this game for like about 10 years and uh you know i'm still getting better every day and i'm still you know knocking motherfuckers out so we were just a very experienced 
crew going into that fight. Possibly one of the most ill prepared. Like we didn't have a, <laughs> we didn't have an ice pack. We didn't have a bucket. We didn't have towels. We didn't have any, we didn't really have our corner set up because uh, Andy, my coach, Andy, Andy Cody uh, from sit, he, he's normally in charge of all that, but he had bought grateful dead tickets uh, you know, like a year before this for that specific date. And I'd said, Andy, we, we've been doing this together for 10 years. I could go corner myself and win a fight. You go to the Grateful Dead, dead in company, whatever it is, have yourself a grand old time. I'll be fine. And I was fine. And we pulled out the W, but I was bloody mess. <laughs> so, I was a so bloody you, mess. So you tell me you took the bucket to the show. Bro, I don't know where the bucket went, but we did. I don't think yeah. we had a bucket. We 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 used my T-shirt. We used we 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 kind of put oh. it together there right at the end. Oh, I saw it. That was the bloodiest shirt ever. Yeah, you got to auction that off, bro. Maybe I'm gonna make a shadow box out of it. I think absolute Yo. bloodbath. The July, the sparks were flying for sure that night. Mm-hmm. So it's been since July second is um. I mean, I know you're training constantly. I know you have a great nutrition diet. I know you have the the tools to do everything you need to do. Is there a lineup you're trying to go to next, like an, another event you're aiming for? Yeah, I mean, I was really hoping that uh, Paul Vera was going to be able to pull off another Cage Titans event in December. But with the scheduling of Memorial Hall, it doesn't look like it's going to work out. So I think his next event's going to be January 7th. January so if it, it all things go you know according to plan that'll probably be the next time okay and you know Look, definitely there... definitely longer than i wanted but in my last fight i did break my toe i did break my hand you know i had a lot of stitches so i had to let all that shit heal and i want to rush yeah. back into into training and, and have that be an issue down the road that was a gnarly fucking uh toe injury right there yeah i mean like my toenail still like growing out like i had a new toenail growing underneath the toenail that's there right now <laughs> so is it like an ingrown toenail but like kind of worse no i mean I, I it's the top half of my nail is dead but it's still connected you know i could probably cut it all off if i wanted to but i just figured keep it on there to keep the toe safe well you got that fly. so you had a different color on that day i think and you could barely see it but you knew it was there and it was yeah, cool I mean, I, I've always got something nice going on over here. We got a little Halloween colors going on today. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Not my cup of tea, but it's your style, bro. That's that's there it all is. good. There it is. And, and my thing is, so it was funny when for all you people, you know, there's some good fighters out there that respect the fans. And I said to Pete the next day, I said, Pete, how you doing? He sends me the picture. You sent me the picture in the hospital with you gushing everywhere. It was like the. Uh, I was like, "Oh, so you're doing good then?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, chilling, chilling, just chilling catch, like a ca- villain. Yeah, catching up on a little rest and relaxation. <laughs> so, so other than that, like, tell me about like you know your classes and all that. Like, what you're doing with that? Yeah, so I'm over at Lozon uh, teaching Tuesdays and Thursdays from 11 to 12 um we've got some good numbers over there a lot of people coming up we've got a couple guys thinking about fighting uh so that's that's always going really good and then i've, I've got another thing in rockland monday through thursdays i teach a 7 a.m uh, like cardio combat class or combat mm-hmm. cardio class it's pretty much a heavy bag kickboxing class and uh you know i've got like a good rotation of three to five people that come through so that that that's going pretty strong too if you're interested you want to get started uh hit me up shoot me a message on instagram we'll get you guys uh wheeling and dealing some some hot leather punches you know what i mean um but yeah you know i'm I'm, i love teaching i love coaching so it's it's going pretty well well it's funny i i would but i tore my meniscus so it's it's cool i like to hear a popping sound near my kneecap it's always cool Yeah, yeah yeah i bet i bet it lo- it's so it's so fucking weird dude it's like like i'll it, like if i bend down and i get back up it's like it locks and i'm like come on come on come on come on pop it's like what the fuck man dude getting old is no fun 
Yeah, but you're not old. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm old. I'm old. I'm getting up there, but I, I'm I'm still living in the young body. Well, I remember you talking to me. Uh, let's say two interviews back or so. You said it was after Chase Cooper, I believe. Yeah, it was Chase Cooper, and you said UFC. They want three straight wins for you, and you know I think you're one more away to get to that point. And I believe that. I mean, do you do you feel like like you're gonna get the call back from Dana? I mean, I hope so. That's kind of what's keeping me going through this right now. You know, we had, uh, which is is why I, I need quality opponents. I mean, we talked we talked recently about someone who came on your show that decided to miss weight for an upcoming event that thought my name belonged in their mouth because they won a couple fights. But uh, I need to fight quality guys with 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 good records. I can't be just taking any any uh part-timer or 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 cab driver or trash can or tom- or tomato can you know so it's it's got to be fights that make sense for me but i think if i get another another jacob bone um you know what's his bucket the kid that i was supposed to fight that broke his foot that's supposed to fight uh Aaron Lacey. zach lacy you know maybe it, maybe if he pulls out on top of zach we'll see if, if that's another name we can consider the question is do i want to go to 45 do i want to stay at 55 um, but we've got, I just need another, you know, quality name that has a good winning record that I can dismantle and dismember and then go back and say, Hey, listen, I, you guys don't really have a, an excuse to say no. I mean, outside of my age, I'm getting up there, but if, 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 as long as we can, as long as that's not the biggest issue, they're going to have no reason to sign me back. And then on that note, if, if they're being stubborn, you know, Eagle FC pays a lot of money to fight Russians. Um, uh, yeah, Bell- I would say so. Bellator, Bellator might might uh, offer me something. Who knows? But we'll, we'll see what we can do. Oreo's okay to join the show. It's fine. Yeah, or- Oreo's over here humping like a madman behind me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You, you don't understand. Sometimes it's like uh, Cheech and Chong up in smoke kind of deal. Half, half the fighters join I'm, the I'm show. I'm glad you... Yeah, I mean, I'm I've been there all day. That's fine. Shout out to you for uh, passing it not too long ago. Cresco, Cresco is the is where it's at. They're my favorite live resin producer, if, as where, far as the car games concerned. Where it is now, it seems like you're pretty much in the shape of where you want to be, and it's on a consistent basis. Like you're not trying to overdo it. Yeah, no, going I mean, high I'm, or low. Yeah, I mean, right now I'm trying to um, just maintain a healthy level of where I have the energy to train hard if I need to, um, but not let myself get too, too big. So let, since I've been back from Spain, I've been trying to keep my weight around 175. Um, in the next two to three weeks, I'm going to try to keep that weight down to closer to about 170 uh, and then and then really focus on just getting healthy through because if, if January does turn into a 45 uh, fight, It'll probably be for the title. Who that other person is, I, we have no idea. It's just something I've been ruminating on with uh, with Paul there. Um, but, you know, if I get a good name at 55, there's no reason not to take that as well. The goal isn't to be the Cage Titans champion. The goal is to get back to the next level. So if, if it comes to fruition where I'm fighting for the belt at 45, we'll do it. Um, but if there's a better name at 55, that's what I'll be fighting in January. Now we'll go back to Spain. Tell me, that food must have been bomb over there. Oh man, it was it was crazy, incredibly like everything was delicious. Like everywhere we ate was like a family owned restaurant, and like very very short supply chain. Meaning, um, don't eat my wire, dude. Meaning like the the head chefs or the owners were at the market every morning picking up, you know, protein and vegetables and and, and produce and oh, so meat, legit, like, like right legit, on the spot, dude. Same like. They go to the market, they get all their supplies for the restaurant for the day, and that's all they have. Like they they sell out of things as they sell out of things. But like here in America, you prep food for a week and that sits in the in the refrigerator, you know, in cold storage. They, there's no they don't have that type of shelf life on the food over there. And and not a lot of people use food suppliers. A lot of people go directly to the market. So you're getting, you know, fish that was caught the day before, you know. Meat that was slaughtered very recently, uh, oh vegetables, God, fruit, don't vegetables even tell me right steaks away. like, like that. They, oh, dude, there's no, there's, I mean, well, steak, steak, you want to let age for a little bit, just, just for flavor reasons, but 
everything is so fresh over there and there's no preservatives. There's no glyphosate. So like I was eating bread over there without getting sick. I was in, and what a lot of people don't realize is that, yeah, a lot of people are gluten sensitive, but uh, more people are, are very sensitive to glyphosate, which is Roundup, which is the shit that they spray all over the food when they grow it here. That stuff's illegal in, in Europe. It's not allowed on the food. So when you remove that, oh. when you remove that, that eliminates a lot of the inflammation that comes with compounded on top of eating like bread and gluten, uh, which not that's a lot of people realize. Yeah, that's, so, that's really it's like interesting. The, the grain here in America is you know went through the industrial revolution and it, and it, it kind of changed with everything over time and the grains that are over there are more uh more of like an ancient grain where it's like okay. the old world like they they're their grains like still the same stones grains. and stuff no well, what i'm saying is like the type of wheat that they grow oh, okay. is very different than gotcha. the type of wheat that they, the vegetables they're still a lot more nutrient dense uh, they, they haven't been adulterated. They haven't been, you know, changed to, to, to grow on different, uh, to grow in different areas and whatnot. So it's just a lot, uh, it's a lot more wholesome to say that. So you're saying the next time you go to Spain, you're taking me, right? Yeah. And, but don't get it twisted. I mean, you can still go into like McDonald's, Burger King and the comparables and get fast food. The quality yeah. is a little bit better. Right. But, the, but those, there's the unhealthy options are still there. It's just a lot easier to get fresher, more healthy food from more like local places. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Like you, you're, you walk into a restaurant, you don't think like the, the looks would kind of give you the impression on the quality of the food where most places over there, they're just like a little spot restaurant, but they're putting out high quality food. You know what I mean? So you kind of like being an American in Spain, you walk into this restaurant and you're like, Really, we're gonna get food here, and then the food comes out, and you're like, "Holy shit, this is some of the best Damn. food I've ever had." And it's and it's really just like, you know, a restaurant with a kitchen, you know what I mean, or a dining room with a kitchen, and they're turning out incredible food. But it, it, it yeah, it was an, it was definitely like, as of right now, once in a lifetime experience. But when I start going there more regularly, it it it's I mean, it's just gonna get better every time. Are we talking fighting in Spain? No, but I wouldn't mind fighting a few of the Spanish UFC guys if I get back to that next level, make myself famous over there. You'll get there. Trust me. You know what I mean? I get re-signed, and then I go fight Italy, and and, and then all of Spain is going to know who I am when I knock them out. So back to the <laughs> local scene, bro. Here's a big question that I've not had to ask you or anything like that, but Joe Giannetti has taken – two belts, well, three. So would would you consider fighting Joe? Yeah, I mean, him and I have a history together where he, I just think he's a kind of, uh, you know, I, that's not really someone's name that I even, like, let into my realm of, of what's going on. You know, he kind of just, he's, he's, he's sleeping in the bed he made for himself, and I'm going to let him do that. You know, he's one of my biggest cheerleaders for a reason. But, um yeah. I don't care for him. I think, I think, I think me not fighting him does more damage to his psychological state than if I beat the shit out of him physically. I free, I will permanently have free real estate in that kid's head. And that is far more enjoyable for me right now than anything else. No matter yeah. what, you know, it was just the way he went about it. His fucking mouth, like everything, you know what I'm saying? Like, keep dropping my phone my bad uh no, and, cool, and, and you know that's that's all i really want to say on the matter i i, I don't that's think cool, highly of I, just, him. I don't speak I don't, I, I don't ever speak highly of him i don't think highly of him i've never said anything about him i wouldn't say to his face don't get it twisted but uh it's not someone that i i, I put any energy into right i i just i was always wanting to ask the question and i didn't even know if i was going to say it to you or him but yeah i mean we've, we've talked about it it's a conversation that comes up from time to time. Um, I just don't care for him as a human being. You know what I mean? I hear you. So life is good, it seems, Mr. Pete. Oh, life has been great. I, I've, I've been having this. This is one of the best years I've had in recent times. And shout out to you, lady. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. They said happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> 
And uh, we tried to give you a hug from, you know, my Sadie girl who was four years old. But she was shy, super shy. She was definitely shy, definitely shy. But she rocked your shirt. I she did. Believe. Yeah. She hell did. yeah. She yeah. You sent me. I've, I, I've got a couple of pictures of her running around in one of her slippery peat shirts. So everybody know that there's good fighters out there for the people and look are treated like fam. So you're definitely fam, bro. I appreciate that. So my final thing, Pete, is UFC calls. What do you do? What, where do you go from there? Like, is it just you, you just Unleash it's just, beast. yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, sticking to what I know and that's just being aggressive and move forward and knocking people out. You know, I, I just, I've said it before, I'll say it again. You know, I got up to, when I got into the UFC, I was, I was more concerned about trying to make it look really, really nice versus just taking care of business. And, uh, you know, I'm not one that throws caution to the wind, but I, I do believe in my skills and I, I think I fought very cautiously and reserved. And then when you see me come back and just walk through two, two to three people, pick people up, throw them over my head, you know, that's the, that's the side of me that I need on that next level. I can't be, I can't be hesitant about it. So I've done plenty of reflecting on, on how I would uh, reapproach that situation. And, and it's, uh, you know, it's better to be, is it, is it better to be feared or loved in that game? I think in, in, in this sport, it's better to be feared and then you can learn, you can let them learn to love you. But uh, you got to come out of the gate swinging. Well, to end on that note, I like that saying you got there. So everybody, Slippery Pete here. You will see him for sure. Um, follow him on everything. It's usually Slippery Pete 145, right? <laughs> yeah, you got to type the whole thing in Instagram. It doesn't like me that much anymore. Still got my blue check, though, so I'm there. Yeah, so... People need to realize that sometimes the things Pete posts are a little different for people. But if Slippery posts it, it's I, I believe it. it. It's probably pretty based. So <laughs> I mean, he's getting he's getting checked on about bread and and you know milk and stuff, and, and people take offense to that. So you know, I I guess some people are sensitive about that, but. For that, thank you, Slippery Pete, for always joining. And um, next time, we hope to talk fights, either pre-fight or post-fight. So thank you for always yeah. joining the show, brother. For sure, my man. Let's get after it. All right. Slippery Pete, Maddie C Sports, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching Maddie C Sports for you and me. Make sure to follow Maddie Cameron on Twitter at MattCameron23. Or follow him on Instagram at MattyC23. Or subscribe to his YouTube channel, Matty C Sports, for you and me. Once again, thanks for watching.